Hi there, Stamping Friends. This is Sharon White, and I'm coming to you from my stamp room today. I wanted to share something with you um, that I just discovered. I was at the Dollar Tree last night and found um, these little mini canvases. I think they're four by six. There were three of them in a package for a dollar. And I was like, huh, I'll bring those home and play with them and see what I can make. So um, this one is the third one. I've already done two, and I'll show you those in a minute. But um, this one I actually coated with a layer of white craft paint, and then I dried it with my heat tool. And you can see there's some little black streaks from my paintbrush, but it doesn't matter. It'll be covered up. But let me show you what I've already done today. This was the first one I made. Um, I used my beautiful Stampendous Giant Jumbo Poinsettia. And um, this one I didn't prep the canvas first. I've never really painted on canvas other than a paint and sip class. And I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not a watercolor artist. I just like to play with it. But I think this came out beautifully. And actually what I did is... Um, emboss this image right onto the canvas with black embossing ink and then I just painted it with my Gansai Tambies. So that's the first one I made and isn't that beautiful? I'll try to sell that at the craft show. And then I just finished this one. Um, a little bit different. So it was kind of fun. So I'm going to make a third one and show you how I did it. And I thought I would try it out this time to see if it makes any difference having the um, background prepped. So bear with me. I'm still going to use my little embossing buddy and um, powder this up. It seems kind of weird to be stamping on um, canvas. But I think us stampers would pretty much stamp on anything we can get our hands on, right? So I'm just using for some mark. That's that. And um, I think I will do this one like this. So I just bore down pretty heavily um, because of the textured base to be sure, especially in the center for that center of the flower. I'm standing up to do this. So there's that. It looks kind of smudgy, but let's, um, let's give it a go. And I'm going to do this one in black as well. We'll just see how it goes. And I just dip it right into my black embossing powder. Yeah, this one I might have pressed down a little bit too hard because my... Yeah, that's a mess. My lines are... Um... My lines are a little bit messy. But I'm going to uh, see what I can do with it to retrieve it. But, hey, it was 33 cents, right? Um, as usual, Bear is yipping and yapping in the background. He hears me talking, so he thinks somebody's here. And, you know, you know. Um, I'm not going to mess with it too much. This is some little double lines, but... All right, let's heat it up. Yeah, that's looking kind of bad. Darn it all. Well, I think it's not going to be as beautiful as the first two because I've really smudged the lines on this stamp by pressing down too hard. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and paint it anyway, 
just to show you how I do it. And it doesn't take that long. And who knows, maybe it'll turn out to be all right. Okay, I think that's set. I just wave it around a little bit to be sure it's dry. All right, so for my first one, I did this very beautiful dark background, and I did a lighter background for this one. Um, hmm, what shall I do this time for a background? Because whatever the background is will determine the shades of the foreground. But um, I've got my brushes. I hope I'm centered. I could stand up and check. But anyway, the first thing I did anyway, as usual, is um, saturate the background with water. I'm wondering if that craft paint is going to reactivate with the water. That should be interesting to see. And let's do a pretty shade of blue. Actually, let's do a periwinkle. So we'll do some light blue and some purple. Ooh, that's pretty. More light blue, more purple. And let's just drop this color in. And this is really all I did. Just kind of drop that in there. Did I get that wet? No, I didn't. Should have gone around, done it all. Oh, bear. Okay, so I'm kind of putting it a little more heavily in the little um, inner spaces where there would be some sh uh, shading. And I'm just going to use water to extend this out. That's a lot of water, I know. But what I'm going to do is use my well-used little baby wipe and just lift some of the water. And actually, it kind of makes a cool texture too. Lift some of the water. So if I'm doing purple background, typically when I do a purple background, I would do some kind of yellows. But there's not yellow poinsettias. So I guess I'll just do red as usual. Um, maybe I'll do like more pinky. Okay, so I have been drying this um, after I do the background. And actually while I'm drying, I might drop in a little bit of um, A little bit darker. Kind of blue. Just to change it up a little bit. And um, let it kind of spread out. And I'll add water to let it spread out a little bit more. Like this. And you know, you can't, I mean, for a buck, a buck for three, if I ruin it, no loss. I use um, a paintbrush that has had, oh, that's awesome. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, I'm just going to leave it. No, I'm going to take a little bit off of here. I use my dryish paintbrush to kind of remove some of the paint from the canvas. You know what I think I might do too? Just for a little added interest. I love purple and yellow together. So I'm going to make a really watery wash of yellow to just kind of touch in there. And then lift it. How cool is that? Fun, fun, fun. 
All right. You probably want to fast forward through this boring drying part. I'm still trying to think. I guess still a vivid red poinsettia would be gorgeous. So I'm going to start while I'm drying the background by laying in a lot of water on this largest petal. And I have my dark red. I usually mix it with another color. And I'm just going to lay that in there. Okay. And then I'm going to do this big petal. And I'm going to turn this off because I don't need it running now because I won't be touching that background for a little bit. So I'm just letting the water move the paint. And I'm going to put lots of water. Do this one over here. I try to do them not right next to each other so that they don't mess up each other. And, um, okay. And like I said, oh, what a mess. I need new paper towels. Um, I will use my my brush to pull some of the paint back out, especially away from the tips of the um, petals. Okay. And little water here, little water here. I'll use this brush, get this wet again. I'm using dark pink and dark red from the Gansai Tambi. I have the 3, 6, 9, 12, the 18 color set. I wish I had gotten a larger set, but this is the one I got four or five, three or four years ago. And then I am going to use some white to do some pink. Um, is that the leaf? Yes, it is. I don't know about the pink and red with this. Um, purple background, but Pull a little bit of that off. Oh, I should get up and go start dinner. See, it's 5.15. My hubby will be home at 6. We're going to have something fairly simple. So I have time. And even so, he understands. He knows I'm addicted. Let's do this a little darker here. Oh, that's going to... darker around there, a little pink there, a little darker under here, a little swipe there, a little darker there and there. That one's too wet to pick that up. I'm going to lift some of this, lift some of that, lift a little of this, lift a little of that, lift a little of that. Lift some of that and some of that. All right, I'm going to give that a shot of air. Yeah, I definitely am not going to be able to um, sell this one because the image is just too smudgy. And that's okay because I don't love this background with this colored poinsettia. But like I said, I just wanted to show you how I do it. So dry, dry, dry. All right, we're going to let that bit dry. I'm going to show you how I do my green. I have two little leaves. So I'll get them wet. There's one there. 
one here. And I have kind of a little bit of a darker green, another little darker green. Whoops, I just dipped in the blue by mistake. And touch of black. Touch of black always darkens it up. That's good. I'll just put in some dark green. Rinse that off, dry it off, lift, 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 lift. And then I have lots of um, my, must, my uh, mustard, a little bit of different color. I'm going to use some of this black and green and mix it with my dark red for a darker red. It's kind of purpley, I don't like that. Let's see what orange does to it. A little more red. I'm going to deepen up some of the bases of these and then I'll smooth it out. Kind of adding the darkness to where the shading would be. That's ugly. And then I will use a smaller brush, which I warped with my heat gun today. Just kind of extend it in. More water, more water, more water, lift, 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 lift. All right, I'm gonna dry that again. Well, you get the idea. A little bit of a blob, we'll lift that up. We'll quickly do the center. I'm gonna add a touch of brown to my mustard. And then a little bit of yellow, which doesn't really show up yet. I didn't take as much time to do this as I had the other two because I'm kind of in a hurry. I'm feeling like I need to get going. But um, you get the idea, and I think that I'm uh, going to have fun seeing if these things move at all at the craft show, which is on Thanksgiving weekend. I don't know why anybody would buy a little canvas of a poinsettia, but... We'll see. All right, and that's almost dry. And the next thing I'm going to do, as though I were fi as pretending I'm kind of finished, even though I'm not doing anything in this painting, um, add some black spatters. I love spatters. You know me, you know I love spatters. And of course I have to add white. So I'll get my cap, my little brush. Even though my water's dirty, it still makes white. It's kind of grayish, but. So there you have it. That was a speed demo on how I paint my poinsettias. Thanks for watching. There's that one.
Alexa, turn off stamp room. Okay. 